Hey everyone, in this video we're going to paint an, a landscape that I'm going to call an antique type landscape and I'm going to show you some examples of some that I've done recently that we're going to pull some ideas from and um, we're going to talk about before we get started I'm going to talk to you about how how to make it look antique and why antique paintings have a certain look about them. Okay, so first of all I'm going to show you a few of these. So here's one that's on paper. And it's sort of just more of a, a moody, dark, brooding cloud. I'll get on this side because my camera is going to show better over here. Um, this one's just kind of a, a moody sky. Okay. And the colors that I used for this are not going to be something that you would probably choose if you're just starting out and you're painting the sky most of the time you're going to want to pick blue and white and when i first began painting these colors were or what i went to first but then i i began to get a little bit more brave and a little bit um more aware of looking at other paintings like from professional painters or the masters from history and realize that's not just blue. Okay, so we'll get to that in just a little while. Here's another one that I did recently that is a little bit of an antique look. And the color is what is going to give you the antiqueness if that's what you want to call it. This one is the most um, vintage looking of all of the paintings that I've done recently. And one thing that makes, these are very popular right now as far as, as home decor, having something that looks like an antique painting, um, but you don't have to have an actual antique painting for it to look like that. And they look antique because they're dirty so an old painting is going to have a layer of probably old varnish on it that has kind of yellowed or it just looks a little bit tainted and and a little darker than a bright pure pigmented painting so the artists that painted the paintings that are now being used as antiques are they probably didn't paint them with the color that you see now. There's probably a layer of yuck <laughs> on top of it that gives it that look of an antique painting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something pretty similar to this one. I'm gonna show you how to do some fluffy clouds and I'm gonna show you how to get this antique type look in a painting. And you can do it. Okay, so these are the colors that we're going to use for our painting. Burnt Sienna, Unbleached Titanium, Burnt Umber, Cerulean Blue, Raw Sienna, and Sap Green. And we're going to start with the Burnt Sienna. We're also going to use a flat brush, a filbert brush, and then one of these larger round brushes. We're going to start with the burnt sienna and I'm just going to put some directly on my canvas. Let me get a bigger brush and wet it. This is going to be our underpainting.
trying to cover everything, making sure I've got all the little white crevices in that canvas. If you want to go ahead and do your edges, you can do your edges with this too. I'm not going to do that because it would take too much time to, to do for the tutorial. Alright, so we're going to let that dry just a little bit. And in the meantime, let's get our paint colors out and put them on our palette. So I'm going to get out some burnt umber. Green. I'm trying to place them in the same place where my dried color is on my palette. And I've got my blue. And this is raw sienna. It's really like a yellow. You could also use. Um, trying to think of yellow ochre. You can also use yellow ochre. Alright, so I've got a little bit of all of these over here on my palette. I'm also going to be using some white paint and so I just dip my brush into my big I used the, the basics acrylic white in this giant tub because I use so much white paint and it gets mixed with the color of what it are. Sometimes I use it straight but it usually gets mixed with the color so it thickens up a little bit more but it's already pretty thick in this container. So I'm just going to let this keep drying a little bit. And while that is drying, we're going to kind of map out where everything's going to live on our painting. So I'm going to use my flat brush and I'm going to use my dark brown, my burnt umber. And we're going to do a horizon line that's down here. And we're going to let it kind of dip down. This is still wet, but I can go ahead and put in a little bit of this burnt umber just to darken some areas. And it mixes with that burnt sienna and it's okay. And you see I'm, I'm making this um, kind of swooping. <laughs> motion that's going to give us the idea of some land that is it's higher here and it's coming down into this area. And if we want to have like a moody painting there needs to be a lot of contrast. So there's going to be some part that's really bright and light and that's usually the sky in, in some of the things that I'm doing. Most of the time it's going to be the sky that is the lightest. And then the foreground and the land are much darker. So that's why I went ahead and I put in this really dark brown down here. Because that's where the really dark area is going to be. Okay. So... Now that we've got sort of an idea of what our land is going to look like, let's take some darker color and put in just the idea of some clouds. So I've still got this dark brown on my brush and I'm going to get some blue and mix those together and it's just going to make a really dark gray. 
with all of these moody antique looking landscapes that I've been doing I have I have not used any color straight from the tube there's always um, like a mother color or a, a base color that is mixed with all of the colors so for this one this burnt umber is is being like the mother or the color that gets mixed with everything to make it all uniform and the burnt umber is a really good a really good um, dark moody vintage color anyway okay so let's look at this sky here and in one of the paintings that I was showing you earlier I had a really dark area up here and then the clouds kind of were big and billowy here and then got smaller so that's we're going to do something similar to that so we know that up here we want it to be really dark so I'm going to go ahead and keep mixing up this really dark gray and we're going to put that in up here and if you notice I'm not using straight blue and I'm not using black but this is going to give me a dark sky up here and I'm mixing it's mixing in with some of this red also because it's still a little wet but that's okay we're just getting down the beginnings okay so we've got this area dark a little bit of some dark here and here's what we're going to do. We're going to pretend that we can see just the shadowy part of a cloud here. And so when you're, when I'm painting a cloud or a sky with clouds, I try to think in a motion. So in motion we're gonna have some big white areas here and then we're gonna have some little dapples of cloud here and then we'll have a little bit more white up here so we want it to kind of it's hard for me to explain with words it's going to look like the clouds are moving. <laughs> oh, that may not be helpful to you at all. And yet the red is still a little wet under here. So, But already you can see that we've got some really dark moody sky things going on here. And one thing that helps me is think big and then get smaller so we're gonna have like a, a little area here that's gonna have some little spots of clouds that are gonna be tiny and then these will be bigger okay and we're gonna need to let this dry a lot more before we keep moving so I'm gonna take a moment and pause and have some tea and come back all right we are going to Go ahead with this one. It feels pretty dry. I think it's dry. Okay. Um, let's see. What we're going to do first. We are going to put in our trees. So I've got my... This is a pretty big round brush. And it works really well for this for me. I'm putting in these little ideas of trees. So I'm going to use my burnt umber and let's do one tree that lives I don't want to go over this too much let's put one tree that lives right here and we're going to make him kind of tall and I'm just going to blob it in there and then we'll do Let's do a little smaller 
kind of roundish tree right here. I'm going to do three. So we'll do another one. Let's do a smaller one that lives about right there. Okay. Now we're going to move to the sky. And I'm going to use my filbert brush. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of white paint. And we're going to mix that with a little bit of this bluish gray that we had. That darker color that we had going for the sky up here. just kind of scribble around in some areas that I want to be a cloud I'm kind of actually really covering up some of this orange or the the burnt sienna and you don't you want to leave some areas around your trees where that orange shows to the edge of our land. Okay, now I've still got this grayish white on my brush. So I'm gonna do some of the land down here and I'm gonna grab some sap green and some burnt umber because that's our mother color and we're just gonna pull down some dark greens in here and over here and since we already used that dark brown in there all just works really well together. Now I'm leaving this area here because we're going to come back and put some light color in there. Right, that's this unbleached titanium. I'm going to grab it and just scoot it across and make sort of a, a dip. So this is going to look like a, a little area where the sky is making the land lighter. So it's kind of like a highlighted little area here. And you can take some of that and just put a little over here little back here but leave a lot of it really dark okay so we've got all this really dark brown here we're gonna leave it like that wash my brush and let's go back into these clouds a little more I'm gonna get out some more blue my white and I'm going to put some of this burnt umber in there all right 
So now I'm going to put a little bit, let me lighten that up some more, a little bit of this light blue. See these darker places that I've got here, that's going to be the bottom of our clouds. So in the meantime, we need to put in a little bit of some blue here and there for our sky. And I'm going to darken this some more. So I'm going to put some more burnt umber in with this cerulean blue. really darken that and make your paint swipes your brush strokes kind of random they don't need to be all in the same direction they can overlap some things here put back in we had a few little dark spots here and there all right so now we've got dark and light we've got a little bit of blue in there and now we're going to start shaping some of these clouds and to do that what I mostly do is <laughs> play back and forth so I've got white on my filbert brush and let's say we're gonna have the top of a cloud right here and see this here is this is gonna be the bottom of it the very edges need to be the widest spots Okay, let's say this one is going to be pretty light too. So I'm trying to make sure that I keep that the very top edge really light. I may just dip straight into my white paint. So I'll use my brush and then kind of feather it around. And when you're when you're making clouds they can look however you want them to look because if you look at the sky every day it's going to look different this is uh, you have a hundred percent creative license with clouds but one of the things if you'll notice when you're looking at real clouds in the sky is that when you're making these big billowy clouds there's going to be a very white edge on them and then there's going to be some gray in there so it's that contrast like I was talking about earlier the really dark against the really light and just playing with shapes and making little skinny areas and darker areas maybe some spots where there's more blue some spots where there's more gray but if you put in the dark first then you can like take this little area here and take your white and just highlight a few little spots and it gives you the look of some little small clouds in that area. And 
and there's some spots where you may just want it to be really light and feathery and you can just kind of dry brush across and let the canvas pick up a little texture but if you notice it looks like these are all going this way all of the clouds are kind of moving up in this direction almost like they have little arms and they're reaching that way okay like this right here we need to look at this because it needs to be blended and feathered a little because it was a little too stark but then areas like this you're going to want it to be that edge right there to be super white and you can play with this all day long <laughs> and do all kinds of things with it um, another thing that you may want to do is add a little bit of this yellow which is our raw sienna I'm going to add it to some white and add a little bit of that blue gray and we can put some of that yellow in there to warm up some areas if you want to do that now you don't want to put the yellow right at the edge of the cloud where your white is of course You can put some in a few places that you want to warm up. So maybe down here at the very bottom. You may want to put a little yellow down here on the ground. stand back and take a look at it I think I want to do a little something right here I feel like this is kind of flat and it's not really making me very happy so I'm gonna put some darker color in there be that you've got so much orange showing through that you don't like it and if that's the case then go back over it with the blue the blue gray that we've got mixed up leave some of it there okay now as this dries it's going to get darker so you're going to want to go back around some of these edges with just pure white But be careful because you can overdo this and you can make yourself crazy <laughs> going back and forth. I need to blend this a little bit in here. And be careful that you don't cover up all of the dark spots 
because you need to have that contrast. I just did that and I don't like it. And I don't really like this down here too much either, so I'm just gonna cover that up. Just like this. And grab some darker color. Also use a little bit of this unbleached titanium and I'm just gonna tap some of that in some of these areas You can also do that with your yellow or your your raw sienna. That will work too. And what that did was just kind of tone down the white in some areas. Okay, now I'm going to stand back and look at it and see what I like or what I don't like. I'm not liking how see so much of that white edge it's not very feathery it's more um if you like this look then that's fine but I like for my clouds to look a little more feathery so I'm gonna take my round brush and try to I'm pulling paint off hang on go back to my filbert put some white paint on there and then kind of blot it off See, that is looking a lot more feathery. The white is still there. The edge is still very white. But they're softer. a little bit of this yellow just tap it in there and your clouds may look totally different from mine and that is 100% normal and good
the thing that that I end up doing most of the time is just going back and forth just make sure you keep that white edge feather it with your brush and try to just lightly blend it and this is going to be something that you're going to have to make yourself like in other words <laughs> if you don't like the way your clouds are forming then you just kind of paint over them a little and come back and make them lighter or make them darker or see I didn't like how bold it was right there so I'm gonna just kind of blend that out a little more okay so now let's go back down here to our trees and we're gonna put some green in there so I'm going back to my round brush and just pure sap green and I'm just gonna tap that dark color in there this one was our like a little bush here and then we've got this tree here and I'm not thinking about it too much I'm just kind of lobbing in some green which you probably can't see very well unless I come down a little so I don't know if you can see that at all and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this unbleached titanium on my brush and just put a little bit of that in there maybe just on one side And you can take your burnt umber and make the indication of a trunk if you want to but you really can't see it that well because it is already so dark so I'm gonna stop here with mine if you want to keep working on it that is totally up to you um, just make sure as it dries that the lighter areas continue to look light and you will have your own moody antique looking painting so the the biggest part of what makes it look more antique like we said was making it look a little bit grungy or dirty and we did that by not using pure color we did a lot of desaturation using this burnt umber so that dark brown that we mixed into all the different colors is desaturating the color making it less vibrant and that gives it that moody darker grungy look so i hope you enjoyed this one and i can't wait to see what you make